Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. A county commissioner says she'd rather go to jail than stop praying in Jesus' name. The U.S. Supreme Court accepts more cases about religious freedom. And a court in India says Islamic Sharia law is illegal. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Christian Today Magazine reports a local official in Maryland recently announced that she is willing to go to jail because of her Christian faith. Carroll County Commissioner Robin Bartlett Frazier decided that she will continue to defy a federal judge's unconstitutional order that prohibits her from speaking the word Jesus during sectarian prayers in front of board meetings. And she is willing to suffer any consequences if she continues to pray in Jesus' name in defiance of an order by a federal judge. We've reported this story in the past, back on March 26, the US District Judge William Quartles issued a temporary injunction barring any commissioner from praying in Jesus' name or speaking sectarian prayers before meetings. Well, one day later, this county commissioner, Robin Bartlett Frazier, defied the ruling and dared to pray in Jesus' name. Here with a summary news report, courtesy of CBN, is reporter John Jessup. Robin Frazier, a two-term county official in Maryland, isn't shy about her Christian faith. It's what almost landed this granddaughter of a Methodist minister on the wrong side of the law earlier this year. Thinking of what Jesus did for me on the cross, I would not say his name because I might go to jail. I don't think so. I mean, I just couldn't do that. Robin Frazier calls Carroll County home. It's a place she grew up. Similarly, she's no stranger to politics. She's worked for the local county and the state of Maryland. But it was her second stint as a county commissioner that got her caught up in controversy. A prayer showdown in Carroll County. Public prayer takes center stage in Carroll County. Praying or preaching? That's the subject of a federal lawsuit that has called into question prayers offered by Carroll County commissioners at their board meeting. Frazier made waves when she defied a federal judge's order that banned commissioners from opening their meetings with prayers to Jesus, which they had done since being sworn in. I think that uh, that is an infringement on my First Amendment rights of free speech and free religion. And I think it's a wrong ruling, but out of respect to my colleagues, I'm not sure how strongly they feel about it. I'm willing to go to jail over it. She made that statement and recited a prayer some attribute to George Washington the day after the ban came down, which just so happened to be her turn to lead in prayer. I didn't want to be directly defiant to the judge. I prayed about how I could draw a line. The more I thought about it, the more it made me angry that we would be told not only uh, that we couldn't pray to who we wanted to, but that we couldn't use certain words. Frazier says ultimately it was an easy stand to make, even though she and the commission were in the middle of a lawsuit with a possibility of tens of thousands of dollars in fines. The challenge came from a group of residents who said the prayers were divisive. But Frazier says that was never the intent. She contends the commission wanted to be respectful of others, but remain true to their convictions. The idea of inviting people to pray with us. We said we wouldn't do that. It would just be the board. So, um, yeah, we kind of looked at the law and tried to be within it, but still asked for wisdom and guidance as we conducted our business. Still, the plaintiffs say they felt the prayer policy was coercive and insulting. I reached a point, as others have, where you just get tired of going to the meetings and being an excluded class of individuals. The case is still pending, but Frazier's hopeful she's on the winning side 
after the Supreme Court ruled in favor of legislative prayers earlier this year. She believes her case, and others like it, point to a decline in religious liberties. I guess that's what motivates me to stand up for the Lord, is because we will not be America if we push God out. All of these things are to try and, and limit religion. While she's received plenty of support for taking a stand for Judeo-Christian values, she's also faced a lot of backlash, with some even suggesting this was all a stunt to sway voters for their support. That was the furthest thing from my mind, just like every other issue. Um, I even tried hard not to politicize it, which is one of the reasons I'm having this interview now and not before the election, because um, I didn't even want to give the impression that I was trying to do that, because this was, wasn't about that at all. And for those who know her best, like longtime friend and lawyer Bob Lennon, they say Robin Frazier is as genuine as they come. She's an amazing person. She, as I say, she, she doesn't have an ego. Uh, she's just a genuinely good person. And uh, she's exactly what a public servant should be. She's there to serve and help people. In June's Maryland primaries, Frazier lost her re-election bid to a fellow Republican. She concedes possibly in part because of the battle over prayer. Unfazed, she says she wouldn't change a thing and is proud of her political record and the stand she made for her Christian faith. It was much, much bigger than me, and, um, and it made me know that I was in the right place at the right time to be used of God, and if that was, maybe that was the full purpose I was in here this four years. John Jessup, CBN News, Westminster, Maryland. Isn't that a humble statement? Our thanks to Robin Frazier, we discern the Spirit of God on you. We do, and that humility, you know, she lost her bid for reelection, possibly because of this crisis. I'm sure there was some other candidate and it was a Republican primary, God bless them. There, she probably was challenged by somebody in the establishment who wanted to make hay out of her faith in Jesus Christ and she became a public martyr. Maybe that's the reason she lost the election. Or if not, maybe she would have been thrown in jail by the judge. It's hard to take a stand against a federal judge when they order you with strict consequences, you'll be found in contempt of court if you pray in Jesus' name. Well, no wonder this went all the way to the Supreme Court, not her case, but many cases around the country, the atheist complainers are trying to ban the name of Jesus. And we won at the US Supreme Court, said it's okay to pray in Jesus' name. Thanks be to God. But here is one of those atheist complainers, right? Monica Milliner, who is a humanist lawyer with one of those atheist groups and is complaining about Robin Frazier saying she shouldn't pray in Jesus' name. Here's a quote that lawyer, Monica Miller said, of course, it's entirely possible that the commissioner, Robin Frazier, wishes to become a public martyr of sorts for Christianity. Well, that's not really what she wanted, but uh, she said, accused her of becoming a celebrity upon whom his religious sympathizers can bestow admiration and encouragement, if that's the case. And if she therefore ignores both the court and this warning, she will no doubt get her wish and go to jail for praying. Really, that's what the atheists wanna do. They wanna send her to jail for praying. And obviously Robin didn't want all the publicity. That's why she did not give interviews. In fact, we've reached out to her. We invited Robin to come on this TV show. And that was before the election. She said, no, not doing any interviews. We're gonna circle back and try and get her again now that she's not running for office anymore. Maybe moving on to a different career, but we think the spirit of God is upon her. She is worthy of admiration and God bless Robin Frazier. This reminds me, her stand reminds me not just of what I did when I was a Navy chaplain in 2006, when I dared to pray in Jesus' name in uniform in public. The Navy told me not to do that, punished me for doing that. But later I was vindicated by Congress. It also reminds me of what the, they did in the Bible, Peter and John in Acts chapter four. They were called before the Pharisees and commanded not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to those Pharisees, should we obey God or should we obey men? And they obeyed God, they disobeyed men, they kept on preaching and teaching in Jesus' name. And they also obeyed, or perhaps inspired this scripture in Colossians chapter three, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Let's pray. 
Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we ask your blessing on Robin Frazier specifically and all of the people who dare to pray in Jesus' name when the government warns us not to. And we defy the atheist complainers who would violate our constitutional rights. We exercise freedom of speech without government censorship and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, the US Supreme Court is taking upon themselves more and more cases about religious freedom. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we'll fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that, but did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching PIJN News. The Washington Times reports that the ink is barely dry on the recent US Supreme Court final rulings from this previous term, but already advocates on both sides of the church and state divide are looking at the religious freedom cases lining up to be heard later this year. Here's a list now of four more cases that touch on religious liberty that have been accepted on the docket of the Supreme Court, including issues like these four. Number one, abortion pill coverage for nonprofit organizations. Well, they already said that for-profit organizations don't have to pay for abortion pills, but do nonprofits like Little Sisters of the Poor have to pay for those abortion pills? Also a case about church signage. How big of a church billboard can they buy in the city if it's not the same size as a political billboard? Other cases on homosexual marriage around the country, now up to 20 states have had gay marriage forced upon them by liberal judges or liberal legislators. And another debate is about facial hair in the workplace. Is it okay, for example, for Muslims or Jews or people of Orthodox face, faith to grow long hair on their face? Each of these cases touches in some way on our First Amendment freedoms. Breitbart.com reports the US Supreme Court did announce it will take one of those cases that we talked about, the church signage case, beginning on October 6th. The case is Reed versus Town of Gilbert. And this is being represented by Christian lawyers at the Alliance Defending Freedom, a First Amendment challenge to the town's ordinance denying churches the right to advertise in the same manner with signage that other businesses or political candidates are allowed to advertise. You've all seen those big signs like the one displayed here, honk if you love Jesus, text while driving if you wanna meet Jesus, right? We all love church signs like that with a little bit of humor. Uh, but in this case, the town of Gilbert, Arizona, a suburb of Phoenix, 
has a town ordinance that bans churches from having signs that are too big. Meanwhile, it says that uh, non-churches can have signs much bigger. Uh, and the ADF's permission for certiorari to the Supreme Court showed pictures that political signs can be up to 32 square feet and posted in most noticeable places around the clock. But signs from churches and similar groups can only be, next slide, up to six square feet in size. Much less noticeable locations, and oh, by the way, they can only keep them up for 14 hours at a time. Really? Churches can't advertise around the clock like a politician could? Well, the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit ruled in a two to one split decision against the Christians. Of course, the liberal judges in California always seem to rule against the Christians. That's why they're the most overturned circuit in the nation by the Supreme Court. And they said, no, it's okay to discriminate against Christians because the Christian lawyers can't prove a discriminatory motive. And the signed ordinance is therefore somehow constitutional and content neutral, even that only bans churches from expressing their free speech, it's unbiased. Well, that's a crazy decision, it ought to be overruled. And thank God the Supreme Court took it up. The Christian lawyers at ADF contend that this does discriminate against content, that the Good News Community Church has a constitutional right under the free exercise or free speech clause of the First Amendment to reach those driving nearby, including motorists to visit the church for Sunday services. ADF Vice President David Cortman, here's a picture of him, who is the lead counsel in the Reed case, told Breitbart News, quote, we are thrilled that the court accepted this case and confident that they will hold that religious signs should be protected under the First Amendment. Thankfully, this case will be heard in late December, maybe October to December of this year, 2014, or January 2015, with a decision released by the court next June of 2015. Our thanks to Washington Times and Breitbart.com for that interesting report. Uh, let's take a moment to discern the spirits. I think there is, uh, in these California judges, in the Ninth Circuit, who continually rule against Christians, issue very biased rulings, and they say, oh no, the Christians don't have those rights because we can't prove that there's any prejudice. You know where the prejudice is? It's inside the judges. The judges are the ones who are corrupt and the town ordinances that try to ban Christians from exercising free speech. That is a demonic spirit. And the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 29. In fact, let's pray this scripture together. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray from Proverbs 29 that when the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. And I think most Americans are rejoicing, for example, with the Supreme Court decision in the Hobby Lobby case that said we can have religious freedom. Christians don't have to pay for abortion pills. Thank God we rejoice when the righteous are in authority. But when the wicked are in power, like they are in the Ninth Circuit in California, the people groan when they ban Christian churches from having signs. God, overturn that tyranny and replace them with godly rulers. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's take one more short break. When we come back, Sharia law is declared illegal in India. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we'll fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006 uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that. But did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama, Obama administration. 
Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Welcome back, thank you for watching, I'm Dr. Chaps. A high court in India has struck down Sharia law as illegal and unenforceable. That's the Muslim version of injustice that's enforced above and beyond sometimes the secular ruling of India by elected officials and judges, but they've struck that down, including among the Muslims. Associated Press reports Islamic courts have no legal authority in India. And the country's Supreme Court ruled Monday saying Muslims cannot be legally subject to a parallel religious authority. Even the Muslims don't have to submit to Sharia law. Now, individuals may voluntarily abide by Sharia courts if they wish, but they cannot be forced to do so, said Judge C.K. Prasad. No religion is allowed to curb anyone's fundamental rights, he told the court, giving the decision of a two-judge bench. Indian law does not recognize Sharia court rulings, he said. The court was responding to a petition filed in 2005 by a lawyer who said the Sharia courts should be disbanded for running a parallel judicial system in a country with 150 million Muslims living among 1.2 billion, mostly Hindu population. And the legal case in question, cited as an example of now listen to this case. This was the case that was brought before the court. A Muslim woman was raped by her father-in-law. So she's married to one guy, she has kids with one guy, and his father rapes the mom. A Sharia court, the Muslims convene and to provide her justice, right? They rule that her marriage to her husband ought to be annulled, and now she's gotta live with her rapist, the father-in-law. Are you kidding me? That case caused outrage across India, as if Sharia law can force you to divorce your husband and marry your rapist father-in-law. And then the secular courts stepped in, thank God. In India, they ordered uh, this bad judgment to be overturned. The Muslims wanted her to leave the father, uh, her husband, leave the five children and move in with the rapist father-in-law, but Indian courts said no. Uh, by the way, Islamic courts do wield considerable influence in Muslim dominated areas. Sometimes people feel powerless to over oppose their rulings, but the Supreme Court of India, thank God, uh, it did overrule, although it did not permanently disband all Sharia courts, uh, said that they don't have any legal sanction anymore because they're powerless, they can continue to exist, but only on a voluntary basis. Muslim leaders, of course, denounced the ruling and encouraged India's Muslims to continue to obey Sharia courts on issues like marriage, divorce, or inheritance. And they're complaining about malicious propaganda against the Muslims. No, all they have to do is report the news. We are for the Sharia courts, they said. But India's new prime minister, Narendra Modi, who is a Hindu, pretty strict Hindu at that, and his new government led by the Hindu nationalist Bayatira Janata party, they promised during their elections to force all Indians under the same legal code, which excludes Sharia law. Well, that's the news and our thanks to Associated Press for most of that report. Uh, again, we do discern a demonic spirit inside the false religion of Islam, the false prophet Muhammad and their phony and false Sharia courts, which oppress and enslave women. That's a demonic spirit. Spirit, when you force a woman to marry her rapist and, that, and you call that good practicing of Islam, I think Islam is demonic so far as it teaches that kind of teaching. Now, if they teach kindness and love, great. I can see the Holy Spirit using that, but not when they teach 
abuse of women. The Bible says this in Proverbs 21, when justice is done, there is joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers, and thank God for justice in India. Let's take a short break, and when we come back, we'll conclude today's show. This is PIJN News. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Thank you so much for watching. We're out of time, but the Bible says in Matthew chapter six, when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, but let your giving be done in secret. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. We'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.